Welcome to Den of Tools. Howdy ho, guys and gals. It's Red, your friendly neighborhood tool bear, back again here in the Den of Tools. And today we're back with part two to find out if you really do need to spend money to have the best when it comes to Torx, aka Star Bits. Yeah, we've all seen the meme. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't help to spend more. Well, certainly there is definitely a difference in fit and finish, as you probably may have noticed in our review yesterday when we did the basic testing. And we, again, this was the basic testing where we tested 16 different brands from lots of different companies here from I think 16 different companies and we looked at a, a difference of a, a, a dollar bit up to a $30 plus bit to see if there was any difference in standard day-to-day -day performance and honestly I, I think we all could see at the end of the time it was kind of boring there really was no difference and that's often why we do these videos to show that Really, in a many applications, in most standard applications, there isn't much of a difference. Now, before you rush off to go look at the, the fun part of the video, you know, there were a lot of questions from yesterday, and people are going to have questions after today. So we're going to answer those questions here real quick. If you skip the vi this part of the video and you just go to the good part and then you post comments down below showing you clearly did not watch the whole video, you will be salmon smacked. Yep. Yeah, I will whack you with the salmon. I swear, I swear to it. I, I'm so tired of people watching just the parts they want and then asking ridiculous questions that were answered in the video. Like, why did you use these bolts here? Well, as I said, we use them because it's a standard application. In fact, these are actually better than standard. In most applications, you're not going to get this grade of a bolt in there. These are 304 stainless with cushion heads on them, which means there's more material around the head. It's going to hold better. It's not going to let the uh, the the uh, the Torx bit you know cam out as much. And these are rated at 125,000 psi. The grade eight ones are rated at 150,000, and they're next to impossible to find. And they're not used in automotive applications. That said, if you are going to be doing something that's like, hey, it's rusted or whatnot. And it's it's been on there forever and there's something locking it on. Maybe you want to use something that can handle a bit more of an impact. Huh? Yeah, right tool for the right job. Okay, the reality is these are hand tightening tools that should be used with the appropriate amount of force. If you need to use more force, you should probably be using something like these. All right, now... Some of the methods we tried and, and didn't really work out. I mentioned cam out before. Everything here cammed out between about 65 and 75. But the, the problem is that there's no way to test the force being applied pushing in in this kind of application. Now, if you don't know what cam out is, that means when you take the, uh, the turning force and that then leverages against the screw or bolt pushing backwards. So you have to then use force to push it in. And there's no way to keep that consistent, aka it's not very scientific. And there's no way to tell whether I was pushing harder on one or on the other and whether it was being a fair test. So we threw out the cam out testing because it, it's really not accurate. There's no way, there's no good way to tell what's really being applied. You don't know from one bolt to the next whether you know the head is aligned right or whatever. There's too many variables. So moving on, we tried locking just the tip, just the the uh, the engagement part, the, the blades of the Torx bit, if you will, into the vise to see if we could test it at that, you know, at that, that test torsion on the whole shaft of the tool. And again, this did not work out well. The vise ended up crunching the, uh, the, the, uh, the end of the bit and basically giving a, a, a non-effective uh, a test. So we brought out the big boys. We got the Bauer, which is rated at 450 foot pounds. And we've got the Earthquake XT at rated at 1200 by Harbor Freight. I mean, say what you will, but it's, it, it's a, it's a beast of, of a tool. It's going to put out, it's going to put, it's going to put some hurt on these. And what we didn't said is we locked the entire shaft into the vise. Uh, and you're going to see this here in the testing. So you can see how we did it. This was the only way that we could keep it equal across the board. And, uh, you know, see for yourself. And our first victim here, the Mac, will give you a good example as to why we went this way. As you can see with, with the teeth in there, it just wasn't going to hold. And this is with the, uh, the lesser of the two. This is with the, the Bauer impact. You know, weighted up to 450 foot pounds. 
So we try it with the entire shaft in there. And the, and remember, keep the comments family friendly. <laughs> and the uh, fact of the matter is, all of these could handle the bower. So that's the only time we're going to show you the bower. There really isn't anything to it. Here it is with the earthquake. Don't worry, the focus will be better on the next one. And, uh, and that was the result. And that is going to be fairly consistent for most of these, but we are going to have a few standouts that kind of uh, break the mold, if you will. You know, on this first one, we give it a second pass just to see what we could get, and uh, no go. But uh, let's see how it performs on the rest of these. Checked in. Next up, we got the Icon from Ye Olde Harbor Freight. Cobalt. Work Pro. Husky. On all the ones that failed, I gave them a second try, moving it up to the top of the vise, clamping it back down and seeing if it could survive a second pass or something. Trying to give it, you know, every chance I could. Not one of the ones that failed past the second time, although from the damage from the first one, that's not really all that surprising. Ingersoll Rand. <laughs> Capri. Snap on. We huh? Ow. Craftsman. Mentco. Gear wrench. Dural Ast. Lastly, SK. And there's your three winners, if you will. I'm just glad that it's over. It was 94 degrees here in the shade up in Montana. Go figure. Anyway, as I said, I'm not real thrilled with the testing method. There's only so much you can do with these. I still think the takeaway from this is that they're, they're all pretty good and they're all within spitting distance of each other. Um, the, and the fact is, if you're going to be using extreme force, if you're going to be using brute force, get the impact version. That's what they're designed for. Also, a quick follow-up on the Icon uh, 3.8 socket. This is the after, after all the tests and everything. A lot of people complained that they saw that the corners were wallowing out. Here it is from the day previous before we did any testing. They have rounded corners. I guess I didn't see it. Let me know what you think. Okay, again, I want to thank Capri Tools, Ingersoll Rand, Tecton, and WorkPro for sending me the tools to test that we know we had to come out of pocket. We had to buy the rest of them ourselves. I reached out to a bunch of other companies to see if they would want to participate. I heard nothing back from them. I guess they had their reasons. Anyway, that said, you know, we talked about this before. There's tons of pictures and tons of comments uh, uh, around the internet about uh, the, uh, the Torx bits, the star bits breaking or twisting or whatnot. And the reality that I found is it... it it's really not that huge of a difference. Yes, we had our three winners, our three takeaways that, that did hold up in, in the final test, but really at the end of the day, was it that significant? 
especially considering the cost. I think what is more important here is that you find something that that works for you that and that is easily replaceable because let's be honest, these are essentially consumables. All right. Find something with a good lifetime warranty that is easy to return and easy to replace. Uh, now, as far as some people ask me, well, what about the Mac uh, RBRT system? Now, they had reached out to me actually uh, back in February. And I talked to them. I said, I would love to have you guys be part of this test. And, uh, you know, let's make that happen. And instead of them sending me out some tools, they said, well, the only way we do it is if we can send out one of our guys, if we can schedule a time to come out and I can demo them with you or for you or something. And I, I was like, um, no, we, we don't do that here. You know, we do the testing and, you know, we give our opinion and they, they apparently were not interested if they couldn't have their guy on site. I, I don't know. I'm going to keep my muzzle shut on this. Let me know what you think about that sort of thing. I have my own opinions, but, uh, Again, you know, <laughs> let me know what you think down below. Anyway, thanks for coming. I'd love to hear what you guys would like to see tested next. Uh, I know some people were talking about uh, the hex bit adapters. I am a much bigger fan of the of the hex bit rather than these torque bits. I, I do like the star bit when I'm, I'm driving like wood screws and that kind of thing. Uh, but for, you know, automotive applications, the bigger stuff, machinery and whatnot, I, I prefer the, the hex bit as well. Uh, but is there something else? You know, we did the uh, we did the 10 millimeter wrenches last year. Uh, people had complained that they I was using something that was too small, even though it was the most common used. That's why we jumped up to the T45s here. Use something more robust. We could put more weight into it. And as you can see, <laughs> they, they took it. Uh, what do you want to see done next? What do you want to see? What kind of challenge do you want to see? We did budget ratchets. I don't know. Let me know down below. Uh, thanks for all for being here, for being part of the den. We're getting really close up to 100K. So people have been asking you should set up a Discord. Well, you know what? We actually have a Discord. Uh, we've had one for a while, but really it's been for mods and donors to the channel. But anyway, in celebration of about to hit 100K, we're opening it up to everyone. If you don't know what Discord is, uh, Google it. It's, it's hard to explain. It, it, it's an online message forum, kind of like social media without the social media company behind it that's watching everything you do so um anyway i don't know check it out if you're interested if not i totally get it uh that's up to you anyway if you got a second on your way out the door don't forget to chomp the old like button down there it, it's salmon flavored low carbs it's good for you you got vitamin c and all that good stuff anyway till next time you all take care god bless and as always shine on